On January 27, 1967, the crew, made up of Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, begins a trial in the Apollo vessel on the ground in real time, at the top of the rocket. The launch is scheduled to take place one month later. But as soon as they're enclosed in the sealed command module, the team realizes that communication with the ground teams is not going well. We had difficulties with our countdown procedures. We had difficulty with communications. The crew reported a noxious odor inside the spacecraft. And we'd call a halt, sort out problems, and then continue on. After five hours running tests, a short circuit is detected in the electrical system. At 6.27 that evening, we again shut down the countdown before we transferred from ex external power on the launch pad to internal power on the spacecraft. And four minutes after, we were started by screams coming from the crew, and we listened to our crew die. Within seconds, a spark turns the oxygen-filled spacecraft into a raging inferno. The fire is so violent that the three astronauts are burned alive. The following recording contains the cockpit audio at the time of the accident. Roger Chaffee, the youngest of them, was about to turn 32. Gus Grissom, who uh, died in the Apollo 1 fire, he talked to me in 10 days before he died and the fire. He says, that Apollo spacecraft is a lemon. They got so many things wrong with it. It's going in all directions. It's not safe. We got to get that straightened out. We thought we had Apollo fixed and there really were some warning signs that it was not. And we paid the price, and the crew paid the ultimate price for that overconfidence. With the spacecraft's interior literally melted, it took over two hours to recover the bodies. NASA knew, the astronauts knew, the administrators knew. We pushed too hard, we pushed too fast, and we all knew that this spacecraft had problems, that this spacecraft could kill somebody. And the very first one before anyone flew, the very first of those spacecraft did kill somebody. NASA is immediately questioned over its handling of the Apollo program. The public wants someone held accountable, even if this means the moon must wait. We were the problem. We did not do our job. We must accept the responsibility for this accident, the loss of the crew. At NASA, some executives are ousted, and even abandoning Kennedy's dream is on the table. We had to convince the people, people of our nation, our bosses, the politicians, that we were smart enough to continue this program that would take people to the moon. This was the real challenge. In the end, the Apollo program is reviewed from top to bottom over the course of almost two years. Among the details, a key component stands out, the command and service module, which must take the astronauts to the moon and enable the success of a mission that no one expected to fly so soon, Apollo 8. 